Hey everyone, this is Joseph from StartDataEngineering.com. In this video, we will look at how you could submit Spark jobs to a EMR cluster through Airflow. As always, if you'd like to follow this along in the blog format, I'll leave the link in the description below. So let's get started. So I've been asked and seen these questions, um, some of which are how to automate Spark jobs on a EMR cluster while using Apache Airflow, and what is the best way to manage the lifecycle of a EMR cluster using Airflow. So in this video, we will see how you could use Airflow to create a EMR cluster to submit Spark jobs to that cluster, wait for the completion of those jobs, and then terminate the cluster. So we will make sure that the cluster exists only for the life cycle, only during the life cycle of your DAG. The design is pretty simple. We will have some data locally and a PySpark script. We will move those to a S3 bucket, and then we will run some Spark jobs on our EMR cluster, the output of which will again be transferred out to another S3 location. So let's get started. You want to make sure you have Docker installed because our Airflow local instance is going to be all Dockerized. You want to have Git so you can clone the base repository and follow along. You also want to make sure you have an AWS account and you have installed and configured AWS CLI on your machine. I'll leave the link in the descriptions below. If you don't have any of those, you could follow those links. So the first thing you want to check is if you have EMR default roles. So these roles, or IAM roles, are going to be used by Airflow to spin up your EMR cluster and terminate them. So let's first check it. I have created these already, so my machine has them. But if you do not have them, you could easily create them with this one command, which says AWS EMR create default roles. So now that you have created that, the next step would be to create a bucket. And this bucket is used to store the data and your PySpark script. So you can use this command and replace your bucket name with a unique bucket name. Um, one thing to be very careful about is we have set access to public read write. This is almost never done in a real project because this opens up the bucket for public read write access. Uh, but we are doing this here just for sake of demonstration. I have a repository set up, the main branch of which you could just run. It has all the code. But if you want to follow along and you want to start with the base DAG set up for you, you can follow. Uh, this repository and switch to start here branch. So you clone Spark Submit Airflow repository. So it's cloning. So once it's done cloning, you could CD into that repository and switch to the start here branch if you want to follow along. The main branch has all the code already written in. So you switch to start your branch. And if you want, you could remove the Git contents. So you can initialize your own Git repository if you want. So let's go ahead and open that. So you can see the folder structure. So it'll have assets which are used for the readme file, some configurations, Airflow configurations, DAG which will contain our base DAG, and scripts will contain our naive random text classification script. And you will have Docker contents here. So let's start with the base DAG. Or actually, before we start with the base DAG, we need to create a data folder within DAGs to simulate some local data. So let's go ahead and do that. We create a data folder. And then we will need to download some data. From You can use this wget to download the data. But I have that data already. So I'm just going to copy it over to the data folder. So this is going to be our data. Mm. Let's 
it's it's basically a identifier and a movie review and the spark process is to take that review clean it and if that review contains the word good it will classify it as positive else negative it's a pretty naive spark script okay so we have the base and everything set up so let's start writing some code so the first part is uh, we, as we saw in the design is moving data and your local PySpark script into an S3 location so how do we do this so we use something called S3 hook which is Airflow's uh, which is a Airflow hook system for S3 this allows you to transfer data to S3 so we use this S3 hook and then we write a helper function which takes a file from your local system and moves it to a bucket specified by the key a key you can think of the key as the location within that bucket uh, make sure to replace this with your bucket name that you created initially so, so let's take a quick look at how we are moving data to S3 and our scripts to S3 so we use this Python operator and basically it triggers this local to S3 helper function with the inputs local data and S3 data the local data representing the local location of your data file and S3 data as to where your data should be transferred to so let's copy this over data to S3 and we do the same for our script file moving our script from local random text classification.py to a scripts folder in our S3 bucket it will, will be within this bucket the next step is to create an EMR cluster in order to create an EMR cluster we will use an operator called EMR create job flow operator and this requires a dictionary of configurations which specify the name of the cluster the version of EMR to use the applications we want initialized in our cluster and we also set a configuration setting to set uh, PySpark to use Python 3 instead of the default Python 2 and our instances are the master and worker type instances so we say one master and two worker they are both M4.x large which is a pretty medium-sized node um, which is more than enough for our sample use case then we also make sure that termination protection is switched off and this lets us programmatically terminate the cluster so and this job role, role and service role are the default roles that we created initially so let's copy this over job flow operator and this EMR create job flow operator uses this job flow overrides to create our EMR cluster let's copy that over now that we have started our EMR cluster let's look at how we could add our steps to the EMR cluster we just started so we define the steps in a list of dictionaries and this list will be executed sequentially so the first step to be executed would be moving raw data from S3 to HDFS and then classify movie reviews which runs our PySpark classification script and finally we will move clean data from HDFS to S3 if you notice we use S3 distributed copy which is a EMR tool that is used to copy data from S3 to the EMR clusters HDFS location and then we use spark submit to submit a spark job which uses the S3 PySpark script that we moved over to S3 in the previous section and finally we move data from HDFS of that cluster which will be an output and we move that over to a S3 location denoted by the variable S3 clean which is basically just clean data so let's copy this over should actually be called classified data but you're gonna go with it for now and then we have defined the steps 
and in order to add these steps to the EMR cluster we use the EMR add steps operator which gets the job flow ID from this so what's happening is each EMR cluster that we spin up has a unique identifier so when you use EMR create job flow operator it creates a EMR cluster gets that unique identifier and stores it in a airflow specific XCOM variable called create with the key create EMR cluster sorry with a uh, key return value for the task create EMR cluster so what is XCOM? XCOM is a way uh, through which airflow allows communication of variables across different tasks so what this ha what's happening here is this EMR add steps operator will look for all the variables of the task create EMR cluster which we use to create our EMR cluster and within that it will look for the key called return value which will contain our EMR cluster ID so it'll get that EMR cluster ID and then it'll use the spark steps and you have the parameters which have the variables to be replaced in this spark steps um, list of dictionaries so let's copy over this so now you have add, added the steps and the next step or the next operator or next task should be a sensor task that waits for the last step to either complete or terminate due to some due to some issues with one of your steps or some missed configuration and the next thing is EMR step sensor operator which again follows the same pattern of getting the EMR cluster ID from XCOM and it also gets the step ID of the last step and it watches that step until it's completed or terminated due to uh, error so let's copy that over step checker and the final step is to terminate the EMR cluster so once the step sensor completes we will terminate our EMR cluster and that's it so let's bring up the local instances so you can use docker compose command to spin up your airflow instance you can do that which basically uses this docker yaml file to bring up postgres and the web server required to run our local airflow give it a few minutes before it's up it takes one to two minutes the biggest problem with this approach is the time it takes to create the EMR cluster generally takes somewhere between 8 and 10 minutes depending on your DAG this may be acceptable and it sometimes is not acceptable in such cases you generally have a long-running EMR cluster and you submit steps to that cluster once you're done with this project you could remove your S3 bucket using these two commands specified here where you delete all the contents within the S3 bucket and then delete the bucket itself and you can bring down your local Airflow instances as sh highlighted in this command let's see if our local instance is up yet okay it's up so you see our DAG spark submit Airflow click on that go to graph view you can see how our DAG works start data pipeline move data and script to S3 and then when they're both moved then create the EMR cluster then add steps then watch the last step terminate the cluster in the data pipeline so once you switch this on it will start executing so that's it I hope this gives you an idea of how to create a temporary EMR cluster run jobs on it and then terminate it if you have any questions or comments leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can and if you find this useful please like share subscribe retweet and all that stuff and now uh, thank you for listening see you all next time bye